Hey guys, welcome back to the Cast Spirit Podcast. My name is John, and today I'm again joined by Coach, and we're going to be talking all things chumming. I didn't do any chumming before I met Coach, and it has significantly changed the way that I fish. So Coach, welcome back to the show. My pleasure. I would love to know, what is, like, if somebody was thinking about getting into chumming, what do they need to know? Kind of like a crash course, chumming 101, what would you say? Well, basically what chumming is supposed to do is increase the activity of fish in an area where you can access them. That's the shortest method that I know of to explain chumming. You're taking an area, you're concentrating fish by a, by applying feed to the area. That's the very simplest of chum basics. Makes sense. So now, once you have tried to, to chum, you're trying to get the fish activity up in front of you. I think you mentioned to me a long time ago that there's two styles of chumming, like a primary and a secondary. Yes. What does that kind of mean? Yep. So in my mind, I think of it as a primary and a secondary type of chumming. So primary chumming is where I'm throwing in feed that is going directly into the mouth of the fish I'm targeting. Oh, I was just going to say, so let's take, for example, when we went and caught that shark, right? When we were throwing in chunks of bonito into there, you would consider that primary because we had a big chunk of bonito on the hook, but we were chumming it with the same material that's on the on the hook. So that would you consider that primary? So that's a primary chumming, but you're still doing secondary chumming a lot of the time. We still had a lot of smelt on our baits. We still had a lot of calico bass on our baits. I'm sure that those chunks of chum were being attacked from everything from croakers to whatever nocturnal fish were around when we were chumming those fish. They were on all that chum too. So even though we're doing primary chumming, secondary chumming is still happening. Now, what's an example of just pure secondary? Is that like when you throw bread or other things, where, but you want to just get the activity of, say, calico bass around, but you're throwing bread to get the salama and all the other little bait fish aggregating in front of you just to drive in the predators? Yeah, so let's say I'm on a certain dock in Mission Bay, and I want to do some secondary chumming. So all I have with me is a bunch of old hot dogs or I should say old hot dog buns even, because hot dogs could be considered primary chum. Let's say let's say hot dog buns. I've got a bunch of moldy hot dog buns, and I'm going to start crumbling these into the water. Well, I'm going to build a huge volume of smelt, salama, uh, jack smelt, top smelt, uh, just all these fish down current of me. And when I, I'm going to I'm going to catch one of those, I'm going to hook it through the lips or through the through the anal fin. I'm going to throw it out on a lightweight knocker rig or whatever, just so it can be bumping around on bottom where under where I'm chumming. So I'm not only making bait, but I'm also trying to draw the attraction of those predators in, those angel sharks or big bay bass or whatever that's going to be depredating on those salama, those smelt, jack smelt, whatever it is. I'm trying to concentrate as much life in as small of an area as I can to get the attention of every predator in the area who's going to feel that activity through their lateral lines. They're going to taste it in the water or smell it, depending on how you want to look at it. And they're going to, they're going to come investigate and they're going to see my slightly damaged smell out nosing on bottom because he's nose hooked and they're going to attack that bait. There's a lot to unpack there. I think you mentioned current. Is current important or do you want just like a dead body of water so that the chum just sits in front of you? Well, a dead body of water can work if you have really actively foraging either predators or prey species. It can work. I find chumming to be a lot more where you have a, a moderate current that can spread that chum over a larger area. So the bigger the arrow is pointing to where your your hook is, the better your odds are of attracting more fish to that smaller area and hooking them. Interesting, because that means you should be planning out a little bit better how and where you, or how far out you cast from yourself, so that that trail kind of just of chum just kind of starts slowly drifting on over that over your hook and bait. Is that what you're saying? So there's two extremes on this, right? So on the one hand, so if we're just talking about secondary chum, you're trying to get as many bait fish in front of you as possible. Then you can hook one of these bait fish on, hopefully, and feed it back into the current behind so that any fish that's swimming up current or coming from the side to come check this out finds your hook bait right away. That makes sense. The other side of secondary chumming is when you have really active uh, small predators 
that are being decorated on by larger predators. So like if you were in a lake and the bluegill were just voracious and you were throwing chunks of hot dog out there, you can bet that's going to get the attention of every bass in that pond, whether the current's moving or not. So you, it's kind of, you kind of have to read conditions a little bit. You kind of have to look into it. For me, I like moderate tide days. I fish a lot of salt water. If I'm chumming and like out in the Imperial Valley, it wouldn't be legal here, but if I'm chumming out there, I'm chumming chunks of carp or bluegill out into the current. I'm trying to build as long of an arrow pointing to me as I can and as wide of an arrow pointing to me as I can. I try to create the biggest set trail I can. I chum little and often, so just a couple of pieces every couple of minutes, and I keep my, my bait real small, and I keep the uh, area exposed to the water very large so that as much scent, as much amino acids, as many fatty acids will be fed out into that current as I possibly can. So in that situation, current is is my ally. It is my friend. As long as it's not too hard, it will bring those fish directly within inches of my rod tip sometimes. Now I can hear a bunch of people probably saying, you know, is this legal, A, and then B, what can't I chum? Can you answer those things? Okay, so in that particular instance I was talking about the Imperial Valley, there's a huge list of uh, bait fish species that are legal for chum, both live and dead in the Imperial that's a very special case here in California. Most of California, you can't chum anything in any scenario in any fresh water. If we go to salt water, the rules are very different. You can pretty much chum almost anything, including live bait, directly into salt water as long as it's legally possessed. So you really have your regulations to see what's legal in your area, if anything is. Sometimes chumming is not legal. In cases where chumming isn't legal, there's a workaround to it to some degree. And how you go about it is up to you, but in a lot of areas, pack bait is legal. So that's where you pack bait around a sinker. Your hook has to be attached to that pack bait when it enters the water, and then it will flow out and down current as it dissolves. There's all kinds of videos on YouTube about it. There's all kinds of information out there on the internet about pack bait. So I won't go into it too in-depth, but it's really popular for carp anglers, some fish anglers in some areas use it too. They'll make a pack bait that has uh, medhaden oil or uh, or uh, canned cat food that tastes like fish. And then they'll put a piece of legal fish bait in there, fish based bait in there, and they'll put that on their hook. And then that will form a trail that will go down current or downwind or whatever. And that will attract fish into the area that'll come and find their bait and eat it. That makes a lot of sense. Is there anything else you want to, all right, here's one. What is the weirdest thing outside of hot dogs that you use for chumming here in SoCal? I use almost anything for chumming personally, from chicken skin to leftover vegetables. Um, one of my favorite stories is I went out to the end of North Jetty in Mission Bay. And, you know, it's out there a good solid quarter of a mile out into the ocean. And I was chumming leftover vegetables that had been left on my counter by one of my 8 million kids for like two days. It did not smell very nice. But it had a little margarine in it, so it had some lipid content. So I was just grabbing it by the handful and throwing it out into the water, and I noticed that the calico bass were going crazy, and they were eating it. And I caught, like, a 17-and-a-half-inch calico bass on a piece of green bean. Well, I think you just you just informed all the calico bass fishermen to start <laughs> stop eating the vegetables, <laughs> coat it in butter, and hit the jetty. <laughs> it wasn't even butter. It was margarine. I mean... And this is, we're talking, this was pure vegetable, and they went absolutely crazy. I caught a, I caught like a 15 inch on corn, on some leftover corn one time that my kid, that was left over on my kid's plate. Well, I caught a spotty after chumming for an hour with leftover pho ingredients, uh, the bean sprouts. So I'm pretty sure, you know, you can get creative out there, guys. I caught a beautiful opal eye one time, like a solid two or three pounds. On a piece of my kid's leftover cheeseburger. Burger? I thought they only eat peas. Don't ask me, man. I don't know what it thought it tasted like, but it ate that thing in a heartbeat. It was a little piece of the patty with some of the cheese on it. And it was like, it was kind of rubbery. I'm like, I think this will hold on a hook. So I chummed in all of it with a couple little pieces. I threw a piece out and caught a giant opal eye right away. It must have been one of those impossible burgers. Plant-based. It, it <laughs> knew it wanted it. <laughs> well, Coach... Coach, much appreciated. I hope you guys learned something in this episode. I sure did. Definitely hit up Coach. I will leave his contact information and his YouTube channel in the description. Till next time, see you guys out on the water.
Hey, just one more thing before you go. Would you find it helpful to get a few fishing tips and tricks sent straight to your inbox? Well, if so, head over to castandspear.com forward slash join and sign up for our weekly newsletter. Tight lines.